Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden and we're going to return to a brewery that has featured on the channel a good number of times before. I've had some nice beers from these guys over the years and I would say that this brewery are known mainly for their kind of sour beers, but also for just doing kind of nice light drinkable things as well actually. But the three beers we're going to review from this brewery across this month are the first in the style category that I'm going to try from them, so fingers crossed they're good. I'm certainly looking forward to seeing what the differences between them are and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one and the other two that you'll see a little bit later as well. So um, yeah, for this review then, we are going to head up towards Stockholm, the Swedish capital, and we're going to have a look at another beer from Stockholm Brewing Company. So this particular beer is called Make Me Smile. It comes in at 6% ABV and this one is a New England style IPA. So um, yeah, this beer was released as part of the local Osmoskalind assortment through System lag it here in Sweden for April of 2021. I believe the exact release date was the 6th of April, so a little bit later this month than normal, I think because of the Easter release actually. But um, this is one of three New England IPAs they released for April. This one is the European hopped one. So there was also one that was North American hopped and the other one I think was a uh, Australia New Zealand hopped actually, but the hops in this particular beer are uh, Styrian Wolf from Slovenia, lovely big melony hop, that about 16% alpha acid if I remember rightly, and there's also Hallertau Blanc in here from Germany, which is about 11 or 12% alpha acid. And that gives you a lot of kind of white, green, grapey sort of notes. It's not a million miles away from Nelson Sovin from New Zealand, in fact. So um, yeah, this was the one that really caught my interest because I love Styrian Wolf and I also love Hallertau Blanc. So out of the three, this is the one that really interested me the most. And I very nearly only got one of them, but I'm glad that I picked up all three because I didn't realize that was what they were doing with them, was using hops from different parts of the world. But yeah, 6% New England IPA. This one, my first uh, New England IPA from Stockholm Brewing Company. So hopefully it's a good one. Let's see how we get on with this then. So as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Stockholm Brewing Company before, and we will no doubt add more to that list in the fairly near future but there's all the usual social media down there if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county province prefecture or whatever it is you happen to be interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the swedish beers that i've reviewed for you that's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated so anyway to tell you a little bit about stockholm brewing then on to my brewery notes so stockholm brewing as i've told you already and the name suggests is based in stockholm the capital city in sweden and the company was founded back in 2012 by Niklas Jakobsen, Thomas Hallgren and Niklas Lenkel. But these guys were also the first craft brewery in Sweden to open up a tasting bar at their brewery as well. But um, yeah, they expanded quite quickly. By 2016, they were brewing around 150,000 litres of beer per year. And the brewery was originally based in Suder in Stockholm, but they moved in 2018 to a new place in an old brick house at Freehamn the Freeport out to the east of the city. And they also had a restaurant there as well. Um, but they had a collaboration with a small farm outside of Stockholm, which was called the Karshamla Treadgård. And a chunk of the things that they were using in the restaurant came from there. And it was Agnes and Malritz, uh, the farmers who were involved in this. They were involved in the restaurant side of things as well, but unfortunately this part of the business went bust and they are apparently trying to um to reopen this. I'm not sure if they have been successful in that. But um yeah, the current brewer is uh, Michel Alien Vigart, who is joined by Albin and Max in the brew team. But these guys also have Sweden's first commercial cool ship as well. So they do many sour beers, and I'm sure there'll be many more released over the next little while. I've not had a sour beer from these guys in quite a while, actually, so I need to keep an eye out for what they're releasing from the uh, the sour side of things. Um, but it was the IPAs that caught my eye this month, I have to say. Um, but they invested in two fodders in 2019, and in 2020, they invested in a 2,000 litre brew kit, which took the capacity of the brewery up considerably to 300,000 litres of beer per year. Um, these guys were also affiliated with the company Wine Trade, which was run by Ollie Bartlett, but he is now managing the brewery and the company, the Stockholm Brewing Company as well. And he actually has contributed quite a lot to my 
uh, notes that I do in these videos over the years. He always sends me a big message through Facebook telling me, oh, this is new, this is new, this is new. So um, yeah, he keeps me up to date on what's uh, on what's going on at the brewery so uh, ollie a big thank you for keeping me up to date what's going on at stockholm brewing company but uh, as of april 2021 when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced around 190 different kinds of beer and that number seems to increase every month. So uh, yeah, three new beers through um, System Bolaga this month. There might have actually been a couple of sour things they released this month as well, come to think of it. But as I say, I just picked up the three IPAs because this was the, um, the first time I'd seen them doing uh, New England IPAs actually. So um, yeah, that's all I can really tell you about Stockholm Brewing Company for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can, of course, check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all of the different beers that these guys have done. The last beer that I had from these guys was the Rice Lager, and I really enjoyed that one, actually. But, um, yeah, you can go and check out all those other reviews as well. But let's get cracking and see how we get on with this one then. So, as you can see, the artwork on this one is a little bit different compared to what we've had from Stockholm Brewing before. But I think it looks really nice. I think this kind of, this sort of almost minimalist style of artwork that you get in a number of... Um, New England IPA seems to be the, the, the done thing now. But yeah, they've got their tap room, they've got the Instagram links and things for their tap room down there. There you can see Stockholm Brewing Company and Make Me Smile, Euro Dry Hopped IPA with Styrian Wolf and Hallert Out Blanc. When I had a look actually at the um at the untapped page earlier, it said that the there was a that it did have Mandarina Bavaria in it as well, which is a, an eight percent alpha acid hop. Um, German, of course, as well, as Hallertau would indicate, or, man, uh, you know, Mandarin of Bavaria would indicate, sorry. Um, and it gives you a big oily orange thing. So I think there has been a couple of versions of this beer already before it's been released in the um, in the can, actually. But yeah, 440 milliliter can. I think I paid 45 Swedish kroners for this, which is kind of standard for uh, for an IPA these days. So about €4.50, Euros 50, four pounds sterling, about $5.50 American, something like that, just to give you a price breakdown for those of you watching in different parts of the world. But this one has barley malt, wheat and oats in it. So we'll see what it turns out like. As I say, New England IPAs can go in many different directions. But yeah, um, Make Me Smile, New England IPA, 6% ABV with Styrian Wolf from Slovenia and Hallertau Blanc from Germany. Let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. Very curious to see what this one has in store for us. And this is my first beer from my... Uh, <clears throat> From my April local Osmos I feel like we're starting it quite late this month on the 14th. But you know, they were released uh, a little bit later this month as well. So need to remember that. But uh, yeah, quite a bit of carbonation visible on this one, I have to say. So um, we've got about, yeah, we've got about a quarter of it still left in the bottom of the can there. Let me just line that up so my OCD is happy. And there we go. So yeah. As you can see with this one, it's poured with about a finger of head on it. I would say that that's quite a bumpy, creamy coloured head. It's definitely not perfect white, I would say that. But you can see this one actually has a very nice colour to it. It's actually, just looking at the viewfinder on the camera, to you guys on the camera, it's coming across as a very rich, almost mango juice yellow. But to me in the flesh, it's coming across as a little bit lighter than that. So it actually looks as if it's, you know, a kind of mix of pineapple and mango juice or something like that. I've always found that pineapple juice is very, very pale. And this beer definitely has a little bit of that kind of paleness to it. Remember, when it comes to the colour of your beers, it's dependent on one, the type of malts that you use, and two, the length of your wort boil. The longer you boil the wort, the more the sugar's caramelised, thus you get a darker colour of beer. But then, yeah, the type of malts that you use obviously determines that. If you use black malt, you're going to get a black beer and so on. But when it comes to the level of haziness in these New England IPAs, and I would say actually that for a 6%er, the level of haze in this one, if you just look at me putting my fingers behind the glass there, the level of haze in this one, is actually pretty impressive, but the level of haze is dependent on the oats and the wheat content, and to a degree it can also be dependent on the yeast. I mean, it varies from brewery to brewery um, how hazy uh, the hazy IPAs are, but theoretically, you know, as you go up the alcohol scale, they should get hazier because of a higher um, malt and, uh, and wheat content, but that's not always the case. But yeah, in terms of a New England IPA, nothing particularly surprising about this beer in terms of its appearance. So yeah, let's have a look at the aroma and see how we get on with this one. Very, very curious about this beer. So let's go for it. Ooh, yeah. Now, the one thing that you always get 
and it seems to be regardless of style, the one thing that you always get from these Stockholm Brewing beers, they've always just got a little touch of this kind of farmhousey vibe to them. You always get a little bit of woodiness, a little bit of a kind of crackery quality out of them. It seems to be their signature, actually. It must be some of their kind of uh, their yeasts are used. And I wouldn't be surprised if these guys have house yeasts. And I've got a feeling that Ollie might have mentioned something about this um, before, actually. But um, yeah, they use, uh, I think they use organic grains as well to an extent too. So that kind of organic grains I've always found give you a little bit of that woody and uh, kind of crackery thing as well. So I think it's a combination. Probably it's a mix of the yeast that they're using and also the grains that they use too. Um, and those, it, it, across the different beers that I've had, you know, the lagers, the, the sour beers and the sort of paleos and stuff like that. I mean, it varies from beer to beer what degree those sort of flavours come out in to be honest but um yeah i think this could be really interesting but yeah the backbone of this beer it's kind of got everything you would want from a new england ipa and i know and i mean um you do get more farmhousey new england ipas like this um you know alchemist brewing company in fact from uh, over in which state are they in are they vermont or new hampshire it's one of those two states i forget um I think it might well be Vermont, but, um, you know, Alchemist Brewing are probably one of the most famous ones over in the States that have this more sort of farmhousey vibe to them. Remember, New England IPAs can be farmhousey, they can be, um, you know, bready and barley malt leaning, they can be wheaty and bitey, oaty and creamy, um, you know, they can be a little bit kind of more sweet and brown sugary leaning as well. They can also be quite rye and grainy like as well, come to think of it. There's six different directions I think you can take a New England IPA in, but this one, definitely um, it's quite well balanced between the sort of wheaty side of things i do get a good little bit of a wheaty bite out of this one on the back of the nose and um, you can smell the sort of crackery and woody farmhousey layer underneath definitely some of the barley malt coming out in this as well it's got a nice fresh white bready sort of vibe to it as well and you can definitely smell a little bit of the um the smoothness of the oats so this beer actually comes across as quite complex and it's um and it's malty side of things for me um do I get a little bit of sweetness out of this one? Maybe just a little bit. I mean, there is a little bit of that Werther's original kind of butter candy um, kind of thing coming out of this one as well. So this beer actually does show quite a few different characteristics from the malt base. But the thing that I like about it is, as I say, the Stockholm Brewing Company always seem to have this little sort of farmhousey kind of backbone to their beers. And it's, it's coming out in this one as well. I think that's their kind of trademark if you like so i'm curious to see how much that comes out in the actual flavor of the beer now that we've smelled it in the aroma once again like i say this is a new style for me from this brewery and i always like trying new styles from breweries that i know quite well but yeah the malty side of this beer and i guess we should say yeasty side as well because that's going to play a role here is um is quite nice yeah uh, woody crackery backbone smooth white ready notes in there a little bit of oaty kind of smoothness as well a bit of wheaty bite at the back of the nose and then a sort of Werther's original sweetness I think right in the middle of the nose too but hoppy side of things let's look at this then um because this is probably the most interesting point about this beer because the two hops you get in this are not the most common should we say um but yeah the green component of this beer is quite nice you get a little bit of a soft earthiness out of this one which I think both hops in fairness are going to give you um I can't remember what the green component of Styrian Wolf is like, but I mean, when you have these higher alpha acid hops from Germany or Slovenia, they always maintain, the green, the green component is always quite noble, if you like, so you get a nice, smooth, slightly soft earthiness in there. There's a good floral component to the beer as well, definitely, but it's not overly pungent and spicy in the way that you're going to get from some of the American or the uh, Aussie Kiwi hops, definitely not. Um, it's just got a nice... The green component of this beer has a nice sort of smoothness and subtlety to it, which I like. The other thing this indicates, of course, is that most of the hops in this beer have been used um, as late addition hops or as dry hops. And remember, the later in your wort boil that you add the hops, uh, the more that the hops contribute to flavour and aroma rather than bittering, of course. Um, well, it does actually, actually, it says on the back there, it says Euro dry hopped IPA. So, yeah, that's that would make sense. What I've just said kind of confirmed. Um... But yeah, the um, the green component of this beer is quite nice. You get a nice, quite bright grassiness on the front part of the nose. You get a, a good bit of floral note on the side as well. And then you get a little touch of earthiness in there as well. So the green component, I think, gives the beer a bit of brightness, I would say. I've always found the German Noble hops have a nice, bright, grassy and floral note to it. This, this, the Czech hops are a little bit more spicy and the Slovenian ones are a bit more kind of 
almost just smooth if that makes sense in my experience the styrian hops so yeah you're getting a bit of everything out of this but on the fruity side of things um this one really is quite interesting because it comes across as quite an oily beer in terms of its fruitiness for me so you definitely get that sort of white green grapey element of the um of the Hallertau Blanc and Hallertau it almost comes across as a little bit more gooseberry like because of how oily it is but you can smell a nice melony quality in this one as well both of these hops in my experience are quite straight shooting they're not the most complex of hops actually um so yeah for me the, the component the green component of this one actually it really suits combining these two hops is quite interesting because you've got that more oily melony flavor in the background which I really like, but you've also got those um, gooseberry, uh, those gooseberry um, kind of green grapey things in there as well, actually. So, you know, Hallertau Blanc, as I say, it's a little bit like a more um, oily version of Nelson Sauvignon, and it's not quite as high in alpha acid as well. Hallertau Blanc is like 11%, whereas Nelson Sauvignon's a beast, it can be like 18. Uh, but Styrian Wolf is a bit of a monster as well. That can be, I think, like 16 or so. But yeah, the fruity notes in this beer are really quite um, interesting, but the more you smell of it, um, you do start to get a little bit more of a, you can feel there's a little bit more of a kind of pungent citrus coming out of it, so maybe a little bit of a lemony, limey quality too. Um, but that suits the grassiness, the nice, soft, smooth and bright grassiness that you get out of this one is, um, is really interesting. But um, yeah, this is a lovely smell in IPA actually. So take a bit of time to ponder over the aroma of this one before you get stuck in. I think, though, it's about time we um, we tried this one. So um, this one is the Make Me Smile, 6% New England IPA with Styrian Wolf from Slovenia and Hallertau Blanc from Germany, from Stockholm Brewing Company. Let's get stuck into this one. Slange, Skull, cheers. Really looking forward to this. Ooh, that's interesting. It's definitely more farmhousey. It's one of these more farmhousey New England IPAs for sure. At least in the initial taste. The other thing I'm going to say about it, the other first impression I have of this one is that it's very light and very drinkable. So yeah. This is um, this is this is a really interesting one. I mean, if you compare this to the other New England IPAs that are out there on the Swedish market, the Duck Ponds, the Apexes, the Stigberries, the OOs, the Brewskies. Try to think if we missed anyone. Ten Hands are another brewery that are kind of um, doing these things as well. Spike. The this one is compared to all of those. This is definitely a, a far lighter. New England IPA, it kind of comes across, it's a little bit more kind of wet and drinkable. And as I say, you don't get too many New England IPAs in Sweden that have this more farmhousey, crackery, grainy sort of thing going on in the background. So um, yeah, it's interesting. Um, it's interesting how all of that goes together in this beer actually. So yeah, this is definitely a lighter, quite, you know, more crisp and quite drinkable. Uh, New England IPA. I'll be curious to see if the other ones, I suspect the other ones are probably the same base beer and then they've just been hopped uh, differently. I think I read that in the, one of the descriptions of the beer um, somewhere actually. But um, yeah, very light drinkable and quite farmhousey leaning IPA this one. So um, yeah, interesting for sure. So, um, yeah, I think this one works really well. Glad that I got this, for sure. But yeah, let's try and break down the flavour of this one and then and see how it goes. So, straight away, across the middle of your palate, it's it's definitely, you get a nice kind of crackery, grainy sort of thing, um, and a bit of woodiness. I think on the front half of that middle third of your palate, it definitely has a little bit more woodiness, but it starts to get a little bit more sort of grainy and almost bitey towards the back half of that um, that middle third of your palate. So that's the backbone of the beer, um, for sure. And it does, that sort of slightly grainy bitterness you get out of this beer builds up the further you go 
into um, into the aftertaste. So that's quite interesting. That is quite interesting. On top of that, though, you get a sort of smooth white bready component coming out of the beer. So yeah. So yeah, I can really appreciate that about um, about this beer as well. It's got a really interesting uh, component to it. So um, yeah, quite uh, grainy and sort of farmhousey underneath, a bit more of a smooth barley malt kind of white bready kind of quality there sitting on top of it. And if you go down the sort of middle line of your tongue in that middle third of your palate, you do get a little bit of a smoother, um, you do get a little bit of that kind of smoother oaty quality out of the beer. But what I would say is that the middle third of your palate in this one is quite crisp and quite smooth in a sense. So um, yeah, it works. So yeah, I find that the more you drink of this as well, it does sweeten up a little bit. It definitely does um, sweeten up a little bit too. So um, yeah, I like how all of this. Um, I like how this the, the the this goes together. Definitely, as I say, a lighter and more crisp version of a New England IPA. You know, it almost has the vibe of like a a session IPA in some ways. It really does have that sort of vibe to it. If I was blind tasting this, I would think this was a session IPA because of how light and crisp the uh, the malt base is. That could be an interesting thing for them to take forward. Actually, is to take the alcohol content of this down a little bit. And, you know, put it as a session IPA. Yeah. As it works, and I think you know. To be honest, I think that would suit the vibe of a uh, Stockholm Brewing Company. These guys, whenever if anyone asks me about this brewery, I always think you know light drinkable session beers, and you know some of them sours as well. But um, yeah, it's interesting. In the very centre of your palate, though, you do get a little bit of a kind of Werther's original sweetness, but it's quite minimal. To be honest with you, the sweetness in the middle of the palate is quite minimal. It's not too prominent, if you like. So um, yeah, I certainly like how that side of things goes together. So um, yeah. But definitely, the more you drink of this beer, the more your palate kind of mellows up and it mellows out and it sort of sweetens up a little bit this beer for sure. But that covers the middle third of your palate for sure, I think quite in depth there. But yeah, on the border region between middle third and back third of your palate, you do get a little bit more of a bready build up and then a toasty kind of grainy element out of it, which is quite interesting. But then as you go into the back third of your palate, you definitely pick up, you can feel the sort of wheaty bitiness there. The wheat forms the base of that um, that back third of your tongue for um, for sure, definitely the wheaty bitiness is sitting there on that back third of your tongue. On top of the wheaty bitiness though, you can feel the more airy sort of uh, yeasty esters coming out of the beer for sure. So the flavour feels quite a bit taller on that back third of your palate. So um, yeah, you've got a nice airy sort of bready doughy kind of thing on that back third of the palate with the bitey wheat underneath. And as you move further forward, you can feel the flavour just condenses down a little bit. And as you reach that border region, it goes like this then. The middle third of your palate is very, very crisp actually. So that is your malty and yeasty side of the beer. Um, in the um, On the hoppy side of things then, in the back corners of the palate, you've got a good little bit of earthiness there. And the earthiness is actually a little bit stronger, I think, than the aroma would have you believe. But as you move further forward from that, it develops a little bit of a herbal quality. And as you move towards the, um, you know, as you get a little bit of herbal quality of this, as you move further forward towards the... Um, towards the kind of front corners of your palate, it's definitely got a little bit of that kind of nice, bright um, floral note, if you like, from the, the German noble hops in there. But you definitely get a bit of the smoothness as well from the, the Slovenian side of things too. But yeah, round the front curve of the palate, the beer's got a little bit of a lighter kind of um, grassiness to it as well. So it does have a bit of brightness and there's a wee teeny bit of zestiness on the grassy side of things. But yeah, the green component of this beer is kind of what I would have expected in honesty. So um, yeah, interesting for sure. But um, on the um, front third of your palate then, let's focus on the fruity side of things. So on that border region between front and middle third of your palate, again, you can feel a little bit of a bready buildup and a bit more of a kind of toasty bread crusty thing. But the under layer of the fruity side of the beer is quite smooth and sort of um, barley malt lemon, like kind of white bready in a sense. So that's what you get out of the base layer of this beer for sure. Um, but uh, yeah, the 
how would we say the um brain's not working on top of that as always see that's where you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters roll their way out of the beer this one again having known these hops it's 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 what you'd expect to be honest with you yeah and in fairness the thing i like about this beer is the fruitiness does have a wee bit of oiliness to it which I can certainly appreciate too. So yeah, um, if you go towards the back of the front, um, the front third of your palate, you've got a nice, um, how do you say, you've got a nice little bit of a stronger citrusy element there, but as you move further forward, it kind of mellows out and you get a mix, I think with both hops in this, both of them are kind of spreading a little bit um, further back on the palate there. So I think on the back half, of the um, that front third of your palate. The melon is quite noticeable there and it's showing some of its really juicy characteristics. But as you move into that front half of the front third of your tongue, you're getting the oily, gooseberry, white, green, grapey thing from the uh, from the Hathertow Blanc in this, but you're also getting a more oily, melony quality from the um, from the Styrian Wolf as well. So um, yeah, both of these hops actually mix together really nicely. So it's it's very, gooseberry like it's very melon like and there's maybe just a wee tiny hint of lime towards the kind of very front tip of your palate as well just before you get the grassy esters out of it so this is a lovely it's a really nicely executed beer this one i really like how um how it goes together it works it works very very nicely in my opinion so big thumbs up to uh to stockholm brewing for how this beer um has gone about its business i think it works very very well actually so um yeah I love it. I really like it. <laughs> so yeah, but as I say, the thing that strikes me about this one is it almost comes across in a lot of ways like a session IPA and a lot of that's to do with the mouthfeel. So on that note, we should move forward onto the mouthfeel. So for me, this one is kind of at the bottom end of mid-body. The carbonation, in some ways it's quite smooth, but in some ways it's quite crisp. In a lot of ways, this is quite a wet and crisp feeling. Uh, New England IPA for sure. The backbone of the beer, as I say, the malty side of things has a bit of graininess to it. It's got a lovely little bit of smoothness in there and it's got a wee bit of a kind of um, sweet side of things to it as well. So um, I can really appreciate that about this beer. And it does sweeten up the further you go into the aftertaste. In terms of hoppy bitterness and things, there's not too much in the way of this one. I think this is a fairly standard 25 IBU beer. Uh, no doubt in my mind about that. And then you've got a lovely kind of fruity juice there's a wee bit of juiciness to it but i find the fruits in this one more oily and that suits the two hops that are um, that are in this beer and it, it actually the beer itself highlights um the more oily and, and kind of light fruity characteristics of both of these ones quite nicely so i'm glad i picked this up it's always nice to see european hops getting a bit of attention actually because it's all about the american and the australian and kiwi ones these days but yes yeah, styrian wolf and hallertau blanc are some very very nice hops but um yeah i think we can leave it at that for this review this one was the make me smile six percent new england hazy ipa whatever you want to call it from stockholm brewing company one of three stockholm brewing company reviews you'll see from me here on the channel over this month hope you enjoyed this one thank you for watching let me know your, your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favorite beers are from stockholm brewing company as well you'll see the other beers coming up in in uh, over the next kind of couple of weeks but yeah thank you for watching check out my social media and i will catch you guys very very soon the make me smile six percent new england hazy ip from stockholm brewing company in stockholm here in sweden slanja skull cheers and see you guys on the next review